Hello, my name is Howard Saucier. I'm a member of First Presbyterian Church in Rockwall, Texas. This is a time for young disciples. We have a godly place story. Do my godly play friends remember how we enter into godly play? We enter quietly and calmly because we are here to worship God. Are you ready? God had promised Abraham that he would be the father of a great family. Abraham and Sarah only had one child, Isaac. Isaac married Rebekah, and for many years, they didn't have any children. Until with God's help, they had Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob were twins, but they weren't alike. Esau had red hair and Jacob had dark hair. Esau was big and had a lot of hair. Jacob was smaller and smooth skinned. Esau liked to hunt. Jacob liked to stay at the tents and watch the sheep. Esau was born first, and as the oldest in his tradition, he would inherit most of his father's belongings, and he would be the one receiving his father's blessing. Isaac loved Esau most, but Rebekah loved Jacob most. Esau came in from hunting one time, and he was very hungry. Jacob had made soup that day. He asked his brother for a bowl of soup. Jacob told him, I'll give you some, but when father dies, I want to inherit most of his things. Esau didn't even think about it. He, well, what good are father's things when I'm this hungry? So he took the soup. So now the brothers had an agreement that at the time of their father's death, Jacob would be treated the oldest and inherit the most. Now, Isaac's getting really old and he's almost blind. He called Esau to him one day and asked him to go hunting and then make that stew that he liked the most. And then he would give him his blessing. Rebecca heard this exchange. She thought Jacob should get the blessing. So she and Jacob made Isaac's favorite stew, but they used lamb instead of wild game. Then they took animal skins and put it on Jacob's arms. And they dressed him like Esau. And he took the, soup, the stew into Isaac. Isaac believed it was Esau, and he gave him his blessing. When Esau got back, and learned that Jacob had tricked their father into giving him the blessing that he that Esau should have gotten. He was very angry. He threatened to kill Jacob. Well, Rebekah talked Isaac into sending Jacob away, descending to the land that she came from, where her family was, and maybe he could find a wife while he was there. Isaac agreed. So Jacob took off across the desert quickly. He stopped one night to rest. He picked a really nice smooth stone to use as a pillow. That night he dreamed, and in his dream, he saw a ladder that reached all the way to heaven. Angels were going up and down that ladder. And God was above, and beside and all over the place. And he heard a voice that said, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land upon which you, you lie, I will give to you and to your descendants, and the world will be blessed by them. I will be with you and I will bring you back to this place. When Jacob woke in the morning, he knew that he had heard the voice of God. He took oil and poured it on the rock to help him remember the words that he had heard. And he named the place Bethel. 
which means the house of God. He continued his journey, and he stopped at a watering hole where shepherds come to water their flocks. He met a young woman there that was beautiful. Her, her name was Rachel. She was the daughter of his mother's brother. He wanted to make her his wife. So he offered her father, his uncle, Laban, that he would work for seven years to earn the permission to marry her. And he did. After seven years, they were married. After the ceremony, he went to lift the veil to see his wife's face and realized he'd been tricked. He had just married Leah, Rachel's older sister. Now Laban told him, you could work seven more years and marry Rachel too. It was kind of a custom then. Jacob agreed, and soon he was married to Rachel. He worked seven more years for his uncle. And in that time, God had blessed Jacob and his work, and Laban's flocks grew. After 21 years of working for his uncle, God came very close to him and told him, it's time to return home. Jacob loaded up all that he owned and his family and headed home. He was a little worried. Last time he saw his brother, his brother had threatened to kill him. And his brother now had over 400 servants working for him. As they traveled home, one night, Jacob went apart from the family so that he could pray and have time alone. Suddenly, something very strange happened. He was struggling with a stranger. The stranger touched his leg and his hip went out of socket. Jacob hung on for dear life until morning. When morning came, the stranger, which Jacob knew was not a normal person, an ordinary person. The stranger told him to let me go. Jacob told him, I'll let you go if you give me a blessing. The stranger told him, you will no longer be known as Jacob. You will now be known as Israel. For you have struggled with God and struggled with man and have prevailed. The stranger gave him his blessing and departed. When he woke in the morning, Jacob realized that he had been struggling with God. He named the place Peniel, which means the face of God. He joined his family the next day and continued his journey. When they neared where they would meet Esau, he went ahead of the family. When Esau came close, Jacob bowed down to the ground before his brother. His brother ran to him and wrapped him in a great hug. All had been forgiven. It wasn't long before old Isaac died, and his two sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. Jacob lived long and had a good life. He had 12 sons. Each of these sons became the head of a tribe. Now the great family was larger. Now the great family became known as Israel. I wonder, what part of this story did you like best? I wonder, what part is most important? I wonder if we can leave a part out and still have all the story that we need. Thank you for joining me as we learn more of the story of Jacob. 
And until next time, be good, behave, be kind to one another. God bless you.